Well, thanks for coming, guys. Really appreciate it. You know, this is a, you know, sometimes getting into the, you know, end of the season is always bittersweet. But uh, I want to first uh, congratulate the Fever. That was a great draft. Uh, I'm super excited about this, seeing that, that team come together. I think there's a lot of opportunity with them, and uh, I think they knocked it out of the park. Uh, second thing I'd like to say is, you know, you go through each season and, you know, you, you really, a couple of things you really want to get accomplished, and that is you really want fan engagement and you want fans to be proud of this team. That's something that we take super, we look at that, we, we feel that, we want that. We want, to, we want the fans in this community to be proud and I am so f proud of our fans from game one to, get, to game 40 to game, you know, 82 or 81. Uh, 82 was on the road, I believe. Um, it felt like some of those games at the end of the season were, you know, playoff games. It was high excitement, and that that's really a benefit to the guys uh, on the team because when that, that arena is electric, it makes a difference. We all know that. That's, you know, something you can't hide. And maybe the year before it wasn't as good, but I felt like our fans came back, and I'm, I'm super thankful. And I just I, – I really wanted to publicly thank them for coming in and bringing that energy because it made it our, – our, our team talked about that the whole season. Like, the game got close in the, in the uh, second half, and, you know, there's exciting plays. And, I mean, it got deafening in there a couple of times uh, late in the game, and that's uh, – uh, something that uh, we don't take for granted. So those are the two things I wanted to start out with. Um, and now if, if, if we want to do some question and answers, we'll, we'll, we'll start off. So. Good idea. We did mess that up last time. Uh, I guess just to start with your, your sort of overall sense of, of where the team is, I've certainly, Rick talked a lot about it the last couple of days, feeling like there's a lot of momentum going forward. Obviously, you guys have a lot of options with cap space and yeah. a lot of draft picks and all that. I mean, where, uh, you know, cons considering where you guys are, where your lottery station is, coming close but not quite making the playoffs, I mean, what did you kind of, what's your sort of overall sense of what you got out of the season and where this organiz organization stands after well, it? Well, you know, it was an interesting season in the fact that, you know, last year we won 25 games, and uh, we won 35 games. But, you know, there was this really unique part of the season where Tyrese goes down. I think we won one out of 11 or one out of 12 games. And that kind of hit us hard. That, that really – because we, we were competing for that top four or five. And I really felt like staying healthy, uh, which is part of the game. You got – you know, you do you do get some injuries, but it just can't happen to certain players. And when that happened, uh, it was going to be challenging to get back uh, in that four, five, six range. And you know that four, five, six range means a lot because now you're not playing in the play-in games, and that's something that's really important if you're really trying to go deep into the playoffs. You're you're trying to get that top six. But I think there was a benefit. Look, I'm a, I'm an opportunistic. I mean, I'm 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 an optimist, and uh, it got T.J. McConnell a lot of reps, and even more important, it got Drew Nemhard some reps at that. So, you know, I think that if we get back in a position where Ty goes down, I think we can handle it better again in the future. Now, you you never know. I mean, Ty means so much. We we run our analytics. It's a pri pri proprietary analytics, both on the offense and defense. I mean, Tyrese is a top five offensive player in this league in terms of just efficiency. So how do you replace that? Nah, you probably can't. You know, that's a quarterback. That's the, you know, that that's major quarterbacks. That's Mahomes stuff, you know. Um, so it was tough to get over that. But I felt like we kept competing. And and this year was uh, basically about a couple things. You know, we, we wrote up on the board, Rick and I, uh, about what we really wanted from this team this year. 
And I think the first thing that came back is we wanted to have a fun style of basketball. We wanted these guys to come in and play, play open and free. I think you saw that. I mean, up and down, making threes, highlight plays. I, you know, we joked about four or five years ago that we had three dunks the whole season. And, you know, we had three to five dunks a, a, a game. Now, does that translate into wins later on? Maybe not, maybe. But I felt like we really wanted to get our players playing at a high level on the offensive end. And you look at our players from, uh, you know, to top to bottom, Tyrese, all-star, had his best year. Buddy shot the ball better other than maybe one other player, I think, in terms of total makes and set records for our franchise. Uh, I really feel like Aaron Neesmith took a huge jump after his second year. You know, we, we thought he had a chance to be a pretty good player. He wildly exceeded our expectations. And then, you know, T.J. McConnell just keeps coming in and he just keeps coming better. And we joked with him at the exit meetings. You know, he got into the league and he was considered a non-shooter. Now he's a 54, 43, 86 per se. I mean, he's damn near a 50, 40, 90 guy. And he does all those other stuff. So he had a career year. And that's not even to mention, we played a ton of minutes with rookies. And there's a saying in this league, league you know, coaches say it maybe more than anybody else, but you play uh, rookies, you lose, period. End of discussion. And we played, I don't know the total minutes from Nimhard, and I don't know what the total minutes from Ben are, but, you know, they played a lot of minutes this year and got a lot of experience. So... We had a lot of guys have career years, uh, and that's something that's really important. Now, I will say this in our exit meetings, and you probably guys heard it yesterday from, from the players and from maybe uh, Rick, that we've now got to this point where we've, we've got some really good offensive firepower, and we wanted to do that. We wanted to give these guys some confidence to where they walked into a game, if they played well offensively, we could win. And we won a lot of games because we played fast and Tyrese would find a lot of shooters and that uh, we were able to win. And, you know, you, you look at it, uh, Tyrese stays healthy. We're probably in the top six, seven, maybe eight. I don't know. Uh, but we are where we are. Uh, but now let's flip the switch and talk about areas of improvement. And I don't think... So, so Lloyd Pierce, Rick Carlisle, Chad Buchanan, and myself spent a lot of time with our players individually yesterday in exit meetings. And it almost became comical because it must have got around that as soon as they sat down, it was going to be only talked about defense. You know, we, we gave them credit for their offense, but we know we have to – organically improve our defense, meaning every single – younger players that get older uh, naturally become better defensive players. They learn players' tendencies. They, 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 they figure out how the game is being played by the refs very quickly, and they can adjust. They, um, and uh, – we know if we can get our defense to the middle of the pack, a little above the middle of the pack, and keep our offense, well, then we're going to be a good team. And so all our discussions, all our work this summer, um, and that dovetails, quite frankly, into like what we're looking in the draft, what we're looking at free agency. We have three first-round picks. We might have two second – well, we will have two second-round picks depending on where the lottery kicks out. Um, you know, I don't want to bring in five young kids to this organization. We, we have enough young ki uh, kids and that, that we're really grooming. And, and, and we still really feel good about Kendall Brown. He had a bad injury this summer, but uh, we really like him. And whether he's uh, two-way or on the roster, I'm not sure yet. But – uh, I, I, I'm opportunistic. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about our, uh, about our future. I think there's some opportunities for us to look at our draft picks and cap space and maybe put a bunch together and make big packages and go after some players. Now, 
you know, I can't say for sure that's going to get done. Um, but I want to be, I want to be really creative with how we go after the right players because I think, at the end of the day, you know, you look at our team. I really like our our second unit. You know, if we get the right people in the second unit, we have a phenomenal second unit. And I think it proved out year and all year that they were be able to compete with just about anybody second unit you know uh i'm not sure if, if this is completely accurate accurate but i think they led the second units in points is that true maybe yeah i thought so um so you know you've got a second unit so the question is and the hardest thing in this business is can you get high level starters now right and with the sixth, seventh, or eighth pick, or ninth, or whatever it could be, with the 25th pick, with the 29th pick, with potential 32nd pick, and the 50 or 55th pick, can you can you consolidate and go get other players? And so that's some way we will look. That won't be the other way. I mean, there's a lot of ways. One of the things that we're just looking at right now is, you know, we model, and then we model, and then we model, and because of the cap space and all the picks, it's almost an infinite, infinitive, uh, infinite uh, way to model. So we've got to go through a lot of things. Uh, I, I think we'll be pretty aggressive in the marketplace. I, I, I think I told you guys we made some big offers in the trade deadline. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm itchy. I'm, I'm a little itchy. Uh, you know, we have this unique player, Tyrese, who is maybe put us way ahead of schedule. Like, we've won 25 games, we've won 35 games. Can we get to 45? And can we take that to a, a bigger team? And, and that's how, you know, they, they get on me for talking about this, but so what? Smaller markets sometimes have to do it. Sometimes you have to take little steps and little steps. And the way I always look at it is this, is you truly have to build your foundation. And is our foundation done? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we need a little bit more on the foundation side, if you guys know what I mean. But once you get the foundation done, the, the walls go up, the, and that's a little easier. And then the roof goes up, and that's a little easier. And so we, we are obsessed with making sure we get the right core. That's our goal. We have to get the right core, and then we can build from there. And, and, and you know, that's something that we obsess about every day. It's, it's what we love. I've told our staff, uh, the management staff, we're going to take a little bit of time, a few days, get away from here, and then – then it really switches into draft mode and free agency mode and summer league. So, As this season was going along, I found myself often thinking back to what you said before the season about the roster rebuild and, and laying the foundation. Can a case be made, even though you said you didn't want to skip any steps, that maybe you made two steps this season, that you're, if you go forward, you're maybe not skipping a step, but you, you actually took two seasons into one this season? I, I totally agree. So that leads me to another thought, and that we talk about all the time, and maybe maybe you guys talk about it, but I look at, you know, any any anytime you add a player, you have to look at two things, okay? So if you add a little bit more mature player to a team, well, maybe you bring up your your floor, but you limit your ceiling, right? And so our big discussions right now are how do we keep our – our, our ceiling is high, which means towards a championship, towards getting a, an Eastern Conference Finals team, which may take a little bit more time. Um, and so we do that analysis. And our analytics guys are phenomenal. Spencer and Brady and those guys of, of really digging in and saying, okay, if you do this, you may limit your upside. And so we're obsessed with trying to figure out where – you can lift your floor and lift your ceiling. Now, those guys are usually the top guys in the league. And, but, you know, I, I've said this before. Sometimes, you know, you look at Indiana and the Pacers and, 
you know, there's some challenges. I'll be fully. But we have this amazing quarterback point guard that I feel already, like I, I feel it from players. Players are coming to us like, man, I'd like to play with that guy. You know, people like to play with guys that can get them the ball at the right time and makes the right uh, play. And, um, you know, we're going to use that to our advantage. And talking to Ty, I, I think he's a good recruiter. I think he'll be a, a good recruiter. So we're going to be competitive in free agency. At what level? Don't know yet. Uh, you know, some of that will come out over the next couple months. Um, and then, you know, with our picks, we have chances to roll up picks, roll out picks. I mean, we've talked about, you know, taking all our picks, put them in the future and getting 10 picks and going after, you know, a, a big player. There's just so much that we can't even get up on the board yet that we could do. And that's that comes down in, in, in May. We get back and we we powwow and we get in in the morning and we don't get in out till midnight. And then we're back in the morning and we just – we just model and model and model. And it's helped us because what it does is it, it allows us and, and Chad and, and Kelly are, and Ted are phenomenal of looking at two and three and four steps ahead of saying, you know, how if we do this Karis trade or, you know, how can we pick up another second and how can we do this? And because... You know, that's the fun part of us. If, if, if we can kind of slide in there and uh, find a good deal and, and get the right player. I will say this, we've got such a good group that it's important that we keep adding these quality young men. Like I really, you know, there's a saying in the league that sometimes I, I, I kind of feels really important. And, I'd rather lose with the right guys than win with the wrong. Yeah, okay, maybe you could say that. But you have to have a little bit of a balance. You have to have some really good guys, and then sometimes you need you know, more than just milk drinkers. You've alluded to this a few times a little bit here, but you have more draft picks than impending free agents on your team, plus cap space. Our, our draft room will be nuts. <laughs> It'll be, it will, we'll be getting 50 calls – uh, in the second half to the first, it, it'll it'll be nuts. We're 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 gonna have to really focus because wh what happens is sometimes twelve calls come in at once, and I'm a big believer. And maybe this gets me in trouble, but I, I think they should, you know, bifurcate the first round and the second round into two days because what happens is so many trades happen, and you don't know who has what uh, second round pick. And so, you know, we're texting and, you know, telling everybody, we just picked up this pick and things happen so fast in the second round. I'd like to see it in two days, but, you know, that's just my opinion and I hope I don't get fined. On top of that, the cap space, flexibility, optionality, all those words you've used, how does that numbers game with all those pieces but not a lot of space kind of make this more challenging of a summer for you guys? Well, when you mean space, like we don't have much space? Yo, oh, okay. I, I thought you said you did. We have a lot of space, and we have a lot of shadow space. Uh, we could get to even more space. So part of the analysis is, you know, there are ways where you can keep growing and kind of growing or organically. You know, we've won twenty-five, we've won thirty-five. Can we get to 45 more organically, drafting, adding maybe one nice free agency, and just keep kind of – and build a really solid foundation, you know, and uh, making sure that those players that we bring in epitomize what we already have and that can fit in, you know. You never are sure that they fit in, but you do your ton of homework. I mean, we do books of – you know, personality, uh, on court, off court, how do they fit with players? So we try to do a good job of that. Or is it where you, you know, look, teams right now, to get into the playoffs sometimes takes four first-round picks to go get a player. I mean, the level of degree of variability in this league 
has grown immensely. Like, you know, a couple of years ago, you you go get Drew Holiday for a pick and a half, or you know, now to go get the Drew. If, if Drew Holiday came available, he'd be five, you know, first round picks. And that's a bad example. I hate using other teams, so uh, I'd like to stay away from that as much as I can. But the point is, you're seeing the league get super volatile. You know, the Durants. Uh, Kyrie, it just takes a ton of assets. And, you know, we've been super aggressive. I'll tell you this. We made two, two, two big offers that we've never made in the past. But there's going to be – so going back, do we, do we keep growing organically or do we go after the big fish? And that's kind of one of those things where I feel you go parallel – you keep trying for both, and you keep doing your analysis, which one makes sense more, because we want to open up our ceiling and we want to limit our our uh, our floor. And that's, you know, you always want it to work out perfect. You know, I'd like to say we're going to go from 25 to 35 to 45 to 55. Uh, when I was in Portland, we went from 21 to 31 to 44 to 54. And it can happen. It, it really can't. And, and what happens is, you know, the days go slow, but the years go fast. You know, like this year went so fast. And I think it went so fast because of, of my 30 years in the league. I've never been around a more fun. I mean, our, our flights, our locker room, I mean, Tyrese keeps it very light. And it keeps it very – it's not as stressful, you know. 30 years ago, that would have been looked bad about, right? You know, it had been, oh, they're not serious. But that's how these kids are. And you, it, it, that, they're the brand. They're the culture setters. And we have to adapt. I had to adapt to that because I was like, you know, don't go shake other teams' hands and all, you know, that, that's, that's 80s basketball. We have to adapt. And Tyrese and Buddy, you know, and their jovial nature, they got over losses, but I think that helped them get ready for the next game, too. Talk about some long-winded answers, huh? <laughs> Holy cow. How do you build a watch? What time is it? How do you build a watch? Jeez. I don't know why I get into this mode, but I do. Your tangent, that's fine. Um, what, um, I just wanted to drill down a little bit further on, on the defense and sort of the, the just project of building that. I mean, what... Um, obviously, like you said, a lot has to go into organically. But I mean, what do you think you need? Um, not necessarily saying where you're going to get that. You mean in, in, if, when, you, when you look at how to build a defense? What, I mean, do you feel like you need more guys can defend the wings, more guys can defend at the point of attack, more more defense like that? It seems like you've got rim protectors. I think you're close to the top of the league in, in blocks. Um, what do you, what do you look at without? putting a name on it or, or saying where it has to come from and say this is what you need collectively to get better defensively? Well, I think you got to be careful in thinking that if you're blocking a lot of shots, you're a good defensive team. What that really means is guys are getting to the rim right. and Miles and Isaiah have more opportunities. So I think it's point of attack, and we're looking at a lot of free agents at point of attack. Um, I think it's also – look, we ask Aaron Neesmith – and, and, and Andrew Nemhard, we looked at two weeks of Andrew Nemhard and who he had to guard. And it was LeBron one night, then it was Drew Holiday, then it was Durant. I mean, and this is a, this is a rookie. This is a rookie. So I think there's going to be some organic. And, you know, the officials learn them a little bit more. They know what that they can get. There's just a growth curve from Neesmith to uh, – to Nemhard, to Buddy. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Buddy is a great offensive player, but we really challenged him that he had to work on his defense. And if he does, he'll be a part of this. And if he doesn't, it, it makes it tough because when we've been great here, when we've had deep playoff run, not great, that's probably not the right word, we had a defensive culture. George Hill, Paul George, Danny Granger, David West, Roy Hibbert, they were just, we were, we could win ugly, okay? Fast forward from that, the game has changed. You have to put it in the hole. But I think we're going to become such a dynamic, dynamic offensive team with Ty and what we put around him. 
if we can just go from 26 to 15 and then 15 to 10, keeping that offense, you project that out a little bit and you realize, man, it's, it's not as far away as we think. Now, it may not happen next year. I'm not, I, I can't promise you we're going from 35 to 50 next year. But I think there's some organic growth, and I think there's some guys that we can bring in here to help and be a part of that. Uh, but we all know uh, and we all challenge. We're, we're challenging each other to hold each other accountable. And where that really makes sense is, and I, I talked to Ty about this, Ty is such a special offensive player that if he can get his defense to, to par, now he can hold other guys accountable. You know, he can say, hey, I'm playing the best defense. You, you better play. And when it comes internally, what I noticed in our good teams that were making the Eastern Conference, everybody says in a locker room, <clears throat> like, oh, there's no conflict in a locker room. And you guys know that's not true. There's good conflict. Hold each other accountable. Say, hey, you, you got to defend this. You got to do that. And we, when we can get this team to have that accountability on defense, plus what we can do on offense, I think we, I think we can be really good. Again, I don't know if that's next year or the year after, but we're just so young. Look, Nemhard, 22, Isaiah, 21, Tyrese, 21, uh, Ben, 20. Uh, I mean. That's a lot of that's that's six and seven. You know, a few years ago, players peaked a little earlier. They're peaking later because we're taking care of their bodies. They're not quite playing as many games. We're 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 working on that, and so players are playing later. So we've got some time. I don't want to rush this. You know, I I I was really sad at the end of this year. Like I was really. A couple nights ago, I was in the, the shower, and I, just, I was really getting emotional, and I, I figured it out. I was like, why am I getting so damn emotional? And the reality is this team was so fun to be around, and I wanted them to get a taste of the playoffs, but I'm not sure it was the right thing. But I just – Buddy hasn't made the playoffs, and he deserved it because you guys have gotten to meet Buddy. He's an incredible human being. I mean, he walks in a room, and he – no one – Everybody's his friend. Everybody's his friend. And he shoots by himself every single day, by himself, and he loves the game. He has a deep passion for the game. So, like, as a goal, I really want to get this team into the playoffs, whether it's the plans or, you know, a top six. I, I just – I want it because – I mean, I want it for our organization. I want it for our community. But when you're around a really good group of kids – it's just, man, you just want it to happen because they deserve it, because they're doing the right thing, because they came in and they worked hard and they, they, they came together and they were for each other. Like the one thing I saw this year that, that made me more proud than anything, they legitimately had uh, interest in other people succeeding. And, man, that, that's fun to watch for me. Questions? At the risk of being long. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shut him, sh slow him down a little bit. Sorry, Sorry about that, guys. No, that's all right. It's fine. We, we appreciate the answers. Um, first question, how did you see Ty grow as a, as a leader, mature into that role this season? Second, how much do the contract extensions that you're looking at play into this modeling? And what do you think you can get done this summer? With who? Well, with, I mean, with Ty. Well, are you specific? Okay. Ty, but I mean anybody else that you want to okay. do extensions with. Um, I got to tread here lightly for getting fined for talking about future free agents. But Ty is our guy. We want Ty here for as long as he wants to be here. And I don't think that that's going to be too complicated. But. You know, I've gone into some negotiations where I thought that and they became pretty, but Ty is going to be here a long time. Regarding his leadership, I'll say this. I've never been around a more complete, empathetic understanding of what the real world is 
loving, taking care of the small people, truly committed to a community, leader like him, I've never seen it. I've never seen I've never seen a connector like like Tyrese ever, like ever. And I mean when it connect, he connects with our ball boys. He connects with the president of or the CEO of uh, some company. He just has this ability to make people feel comfortable around him. And that's something that uh, I, I think it's a step. When I talk to him, I learn from him. I really do. Like, he'll say something about basketball. He loves watching college basketball. He loves watching NBA basketball. And we'll walk by each other, and I'll say, hey, did you see that Iowa State-Kansas game? And, he, and we'll get in a discussion. He just He's just a basketball lover. And if you know his family, his, his mom and dad, they're salt of the earth, and they have – and the mom's kind of like become the team mom, uh, if you can say that in a, in a pro level. But his dad is, he and his dad are a lot alike, and they're, they, they're just full of energy. They just got, you ever been around people that you just walk by and you feel like, man, that's a lot of positive energy coming. And he's that, and uh, looking forward to having him for the next a lot of years. That answer that? Okay, okay, good. Kevin, um, two, two questions also for you. First, is there a certain position on the team that you think needs to be filled? I know a lot of people talk about the four spot. Sure. And then secondly, Rick yesterday, going back to Ty, said that he's sort of become this partner in this franchise, in this organization. How much of the conversation do you have with a guy like him when it comes to, we're looking at this guy, how about this? What do you think, Ty? Well, Ty knows his stuff in terms of players. He studies it. I guess I would say this. There's not many major decisions that I'll be looking at that he won't be a part of. And that's, you know, what I tell players. I've, I've had this question a uh, long time ago with Brandon Roy in, in Portland, became that kind of guy, and we had a, a great dialogue. And um, – I, I, I want to get his feelings, but I don't want to put the pressure on him. The pressure's on me. I don't want to add that pressure, okay? So I'll, I'll listen to him. I'll try to help. <coughs> Excuse me. But at the end of the day, I kind of got to make that decision. But I, I, our conversations when we talk about players tend to be very lined up. Like when he likes a guy for us, I go, yeah, that makes sense. And and what's fun is him and I can have really good debates about players. And sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree, but we usually unite on the decision. So uh, when Rick said that he was a partner, it was me, Rick, uh, Lloyd, Chad, and uh, Tyrese. And we all said, this is the partnership. This is the group that's going to be making and looking at things. And uh, I, I, I saw his eyes kind of beam, like, you know, he wanted to be a part of that too. Quite frankly, there's a couple guys on our team that I bounce ideas off of. You know, at the end of the day, players know, you, you know, they know other players. They know them, you know, from playing against them, from what they've heard. Are they our culture? Do they not fit our culture? Are they going to be bad for us? Our players know. So we, what we do is we sort of try to triangulate. Like he played because there's a little bit of a six degrees of separation or whatever the Kevin Bacon thing is. Um, they all know each other. So we, we, we try to dig into that too. We talked last summer about how you in the front office had a lot of talks about a more long-term approach and changing your thinking in that way. How does the success, and like you said, taking two steps this season, impact or change the way you think about that going into next year and beyond? Well, we, we had studied some of the really successful teams. You know, like Cleveland, we feel like, has done a really nice job. And it took them three or four years. Um, but getting Ty, getting Ben, getting Nimhard, uh, Buddy, I do feel like it's it's created this opportunity 
to maybe speed up that. How much? I'm not sure yet. Ask me after July 7th. I'll be, I'll be able to tell you then, you know. And, and again, we're going to look at big deals. And we might, you know, I want to, the way I look at every single, uh, you know, draft and free agency, I've kind of changed in the last few years in that uh, sometimes I'd say, here's the hard approach. Let's go after this or this. And more now, I, I try to keep my mind open to what are all the possibilities because we've studied hard when we've made good decisions and when we made bad decisions. And we tend to make really good decisions when we keep our minds open and are willing to call audibles at the last minute. Those, for whatever reason, whether luck or we just prepared or it comes at us, those have been our best. And so we kind of go out with this, hey, everything's on the table and then things kind of whittle down and, and, and then you get your decision making. But, you know, when we've made our best one, it's when it's, it's a last minute, call an audible, let's go get Tyrese for this package. Um, and, and so I think we'll attack this as we can go big or we can keep organically growing and let's see which one comes, comes uh, which fits us best. This might be uh, one of those questions that gets you fined if you answer, so I'll just ask them all. And if you can't, if, if I can't, <laughs> no comment. Let me throw it out. Um, if I mean, first off, I mean, you, you mentioned um, you know Buddy and, and his defense is if he needs to get better. I mean, are you going to look at trying to do an extension for him this off season, or is that something that you want to wait to see how he gets together? And, and do you have a, a, you know, have you made your decisions? I guess on the free agents that are coming, OJ, George, and James. Right. Um, so, Buddy specifically. You know, he's under contract for another year. So we don't have to early extend. We could. Uh, I love Buddy. Like, there's some things that he does that's not on the court. The way he keeps practice light. Um, but I think we've got to define his role next year. And if we can get a role where he's comfortable and we're comfortable, then I'm not opposed to it. Now, I'm not saying we're going to do it for sure, but I'm not opposed to it. Which ones are they? You know, those guys are, are guys that, you know, we'll be looking at, but uh, with all these draft picks and cap space, they're not July 1 deals, they're July 10. So, you know, I'm not trying to cop out the, the question. I just don't think we get to that decision tree until later on. And I don't want to hurt or help them or give them false hope or tell no. I just, I want to really respect them in that. And I'd rather have that direct conversation because all three of those guys are awesome, awesome people. And I want to, I want to sit face to face at dinner and say, here's what we're going to do just out of respect. You know, George Hill has meant so much to this organization. And quite frankly, he came back in in that New York game, and I was like, that is the, the – that's young – that's young George Hill. There, there's still miles left, and he really helped us in that game. And, you know, what came out of the exit meeting is that he loves it here. And that means a lot to me, you know. Uh, he loves playing. He loves competing. And it was, it was an overwhelming sense that he really helped our point guards this year when he came in. Hey, here's how they're playing the pick and roll defense. They're going over the top. Let's try to turn the corner and get downhill. And I think he really helped T.J. McConnell. I mean, he's got a ton of experience. And, you know, in his prime, I know of no other defender that could do what he did. I mean, he was elite defensively. And it was a beautiful thing. And, you know, quite frankly, I, I keep thinking in my mind, when we were good during those years, we were good, so so good defensively. And could he bring a, a big part of that? James Johnson, the same thing. You know, he brought a credibility on the court. He brought credibility on the locker room. James has this ability to connect with people that you wouldn't think. You know, you look at him, you, you think, wow, I can't connect with him. I had some of the greatest conversations with him this year that were just about life, just about how his life was and 
how his mom and dad were, were, you know, and, you know, during the year over, you know, six, seven months, there's always where you really meet the players is just, it's after practice, you sit down and you say, Hey, how you doing? And then all of a sudden it's an hour later and you're talking about, you know, going and seeing the movie air, you know, it's just, that's just the way it is. And that's how you build connections. And that's how you build like a, a spider web of co connections where everybody feels good. And we've kind of felt that and we got to keep doing that. Kevin, what is the biggest positional need on this roster? You know, everybody asks that and everybody assumes it's a four. I would say this, that we define positions in a couple of different ways. We have guards, we have combos, we have wings, we have hybrids, we have power forwards, and we have full-time centers. So we do our rankings based on a little bit more complex than one, two, three, or four. So I would say fours and, and sort of the hybrids are what we're really dialing into. Uh, I would tell you this, though, that if you look at what 29 other teams are after, they're after hybrids and fours. So it becomes a highly competitive uh, uh, cycle to get those. But, you know, I do believe we have, you know, Aaron, Aaron Neesmith did a, a very honorable job. Is he a starter yet? I'm not sure. Uh, and I think Nawara came in and really kind of solidified himself as a pretty good backup. I don't think we know what he is yet. He has an unbelievable ability to score the ball at ease. Like, he easily scores. But we challenged him. That position in the NBA right now, it's so important because you're in a lot of defensive action. So it's more on the defensive end. And we I don't know if we found the defensive guy, but we found a couple guys that can play pretty good offensively. So those hybrids and fours we'll be, we'll be dialing into.